one has to find the zeros of the given cubic function. These zeros are the x values or inputs to give a function value or output of zero, which means to find the zeros, we set the function equal to zero and solve. This gives us the equation x cubed plus five x squared plus three x plus 15 equals zero. And let's see if we can solve this by factoring. Because the expression on the left side has four terms, let's see if we can factor the left side using the technique of factoring by grouping. The first step is to cut the expression on the left in half and then factor out the greatest common factor from the left side and right side. And if we do have a common binomial factor, it is factorable by grouping. The greatest common factor of x cubed plus five x squared is x squared. We factor out x squared we're left with the quantity x plus five. And the greatest common factor of three x plus 15 is three, and therefore we factor out a positive three. We factor out positive three, we're left with the factor of x plus five. Now notice on the left side, we do have a common binomial factor of x plus five, which means we are able to factor the left side using the technique of factoring by grouping. Now we factor out the common binomial factor of x plus five, which gives us the quantity x plus five times the quantity x squared plus three. The product on the left is equal to zero when x plus five is equal to zero or when x squared plus three is equal to zero. Solving x plus five equals zero for x, we subtract five on both sides, which gives us x equals negative five. Solving x squared plus three equals zero, we first subtract three on both sides, which gives us x squared equals negative three. And now to undo the squaring and solve for x, we square root both sides of the equation. But remember, we are going to have two solutions, and therefore, when we square root both sides of the equation, we include a plus or minus on the right. Simplifying, the square root of x squared is equal to one factor of x. We have x equals plus or minus the square root of negative three, which is equal to the square root of negative one times positive three. And remember, the square root of negative one is equal to i. So here we have two complex solutions. We have x equals plus or minus either i square root three or square root three i. Square root three i does fit the form of a plus or minus b i with the factor of i on the right side. So we now have our three zeros. We have one real rational zero of negative five and we have two complex or imaginary zeros of plus or minus square root three i. Let's go ahead and list those. We have negative five comma, negative square root three i, and positive square root three i. Before we go, let's graph the given function on the coordinate plane to help verify our work. I've already graphed the given function on the coordinate plane using desmos.com. Remember, we can verify the real zeros of a function by identifying the x or horizontal intercepts. Notice in this case though, we only have one x-intercept of negative five comma zero, which indicates negative five is a zero of the given function. The reason we don't see the two complex zeros is because the x-axis is a real number line. So while we can't verify our exact complex zeros, since they do only have one x-intercept, we do know that the two other zeros must be complex. I hope you found this helpful.